Have you pressed record on that? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yeah? Yeah. So, today, we set off to find a cave where it says, which it says in the book, is a doable hike. Thinking, okay, yeah, we can do this. This would be for easy, easy. Even to make it easier, we'll go along the main road and catch the track so we don't have to get lost in the maze like we did the other day. Perfect. So we have a nice leisurely uh, time in the morning. We get ready. Off we trot. Do, 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 do. We're going. We get all the way up the main road, about three kilometres. So it's quite a way, you know, when you're walking in the in the heat. Oh, check the map. This is the turn off. Off we turn, and we go on, and it's all right. We get to a little sort of, not really a village, a couple of houses, and there's like a crossroad. It's on my map. Dot dot dot. Perfect. Carry on. Straight. Here we go. We're going to get to this cave. It's going to be glorious. It's going to be like a free tour. It's going to be amazing. And then the mud just gets thicker and deeper and wetter and muddier and you very tenderly sort of tentatively going around the edges trying to keep our shoes clean and trying not to get in too much of a mess at one point i was up to not quite my knee but definitely way beyond my ankle but stuck like really really stuck but my shoes falling off and it's disastrous and then my shoes are like my vibram shoes have got like velcro that comes around the sides right so then the velcro is full of mud so then they're not sticking so they're flapping about everywhere oh my goodness it was horrendous so we sort of look at each other and we think maybe we should go back it still says two kilometers and so maybe it's two kilometers of this yeah we should go back so a bit defeated we head off back but we'd seen a sign just before our uh, disastrous pile of mud. Hugo's face goes, Hugo's natural. You know, ooh, juice, <coughs> someone up here. So we go up this track. So there's this little hut there. We think, no sign that says cafeteria, but it's, it's the only building I can see. I can hear voices. So we go in and there's a guy outside sort of just looking in and we go, oh, voila, permiso. We sort of said, we're trying to get to the cave. Oh, and by this point, by the way, I'm walking barefoot because <laughs> I'm holding my shoes. My shoes were covered. My feet were just as bad. So I'm just like, hi. <laughs> Hola. Hola. So we're trying to get to the, uh, I said, is it possible to get to the cave? I said, it's too much mud that way. Is it, is it possible? Oh, yeah, one minute, do you, want, do you want some coffee? I was like, oh no, I don't want coffee, Ash. Do you want some coffee? Ash is like, oh no. no. And they come out with a little cup of coffee. And Sasha has his coffee, and without even asking, you know, without having to sort of say, "Help me do this, whatever." This guy just comes out of his hut, two cups of water, and he's washing my hands for me. He's helping me clean up my hands. The guy then gives us a cigar after giving Ashley the coffee. He just comes out and goes, "Here you go." Right, so you go to the cave. I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "You want to go on on horse? You want to ride a horse?" And, I was, and Ashley didn't want to ride a horse. This was the one thing. I said, oh, I made a little bit of a lie. I said he's allergic. I said, oh, tiene alergia. What about going in the horse cart? I was like, mm, are you happy to go in the horse cart, Ashley? So we went in the horse cart. So then off we, off we trundle. So we get in our little horse cart, the guy on one side steering our horse. Mojito was the name of our horse. We're sat on the other side holding on for dear life because it's quite muddy and... You know, we're sort of going back and forward a little bit. And we, oh, we agreed a price, five kirk, he said. Perfect. We get down to the cafeteria. Ah, another guy comes out, speaks English. And he's like, hello, do you, do you want to see the, how, the coffee process, how coffee is made? And we're like, ah. And he's like, included in the tour. I was like, oh, the tour with that guy? He's like, yeah. I was like, okay. He accidentally ended up on this. Oh. Yeah, kind of, it, completely accidentally. I think this guy just knew the people that owned the, coffee, the cafeteria and thought, here's some tourists, give, them, give the cafeteria a couple of cups. We have to have a drink now, this guy's been amazing to us. So we tried so a mango juice, you had a coffee, didn't you? Yeah. And then we carried on on our merry way with our horseman. We're going through and, and Mojito's doing quite the job. He's going through puddles that you wouldn't even dream of. He's, you know, we would never have made it to the cave on our own. And then we kind of come to this hut and we stop, and he says, right, we're at the cave now, it's too much mud for the horse. I'm like, oh, oh no, is this, is this legit? So we get off, and uh, we're walking again. And my shoes, because <laughs> they were so muddy, like I said, the Velcro wasn't sticking, so I'm, I had to keep stopping, like tucking the flaps in the side, because they wouldn't stick to the Velcro. And we're going through it, and it was still quite muddy, not as bad as what we'd had so far. I'm like kind of holding back the spiky plants, trying to get through this, this field. And then we end up in this bamboo plain. There's just heaps of bamboo everywhere in this flat land. We're like, oh. And he says to these guys, oh, you're here for the cave? And we're like, what the heck is this? How did they know? 
but these guys just wait there all day, see if anyone turns up at the cave. They've got their torches, they've got their welly boots on, they're ready to show people around the cave if they turn up. And the guy took us into the cave and I'm thinking, oh, I hope that, I hope this is, this is good, this is going to be good. And I wasn't sure what to expect, like, all we just thought was, oh yeah, there's a natural swimming hole in, at this cave. It might be the entrance, is it like in the cave with like an, a sort of skylight, you know, like a sort of cenote kind of thing? I'm not sure what to expect, is it going to be full of tourists? I don't know. No one else was there, it was just us. And we walk through this cave and he's showing us the stalagmites and the stalactites pointing the things out. Keep going, keep going. Not organised at all, you know, as, as you would probably learn from the journey we took to get there. And then he says, there you go, this is a natural pool, there's no animals, there's no rocks on the bottom. It gets to about this deep when you get in and about this deep when you go further. If you want to swim, you can swim. I just upset. Oh, I might just dip my feet. I was like, there's no way I'm just dipping my feet. <laughs> We've come this far. <laughs> I'm going all in. Gently got in, about 18 degrees was the temperature, the water. But it was lovely, really nice and cool. And I don't think we would have gone in there on our own. No. There's no way. No way. So it was, you know, it worked out well. And then, uh, yeah, we kind of came out of the cave, Lamos. We got back with our horseman and off we went. How much of the day do you think would have been possible without Spanish? <laughs> no one at that hut spoke English. The only guy that spoke English was the coffee guy. Um, you would have never got to him. But you would never have got to him without the first step. You would have never met Mojito. You know, I mean, you could have gone up and, with the mud and sort of been like, oh, I'm so muddy in English. And then, you know, just he probably would have helped you wash your hands, maybe given you a coffee. And if you then said Cueva, which, you know, if you'd read the map and you knew it was that's what you were looking for, then uh, I guess he might have said, but you wouldn't have been able to communicate the idea of like how much it cost and you know yeah so language is fun <laughs> it leads to uh, unexpected experiences <laughs>